Hi, I'm Ariel. Welcome back to Cat Streets, and today I'm going to share with you two book reviews. I'm just trying to catch up on the books that I haven't talked about yet, and things are going to change in the way I do these in the near future, and you'll see what that is when the time comes. But for now, I wanted to talk about these two books. The first being Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. This is the first book in the Gilead series of sorts, each book dealing with a specific character that came from this book. In Gilead, we have an old man, Reverend John Ames, writing his thoughts out to his son in a very sluggish and rambly manner. Also very preachy, which definitely took away from the story for me. I don't mind when a character is religious or has religious viewpoints, but when it gets to the point where it's heavy-handed, that's when I start pulling away from the book. We all have different viewpoints and what we believe in, and I get that, and normally I don't mind it. But this was so heavy-handed, it was really suffocating to try to read this, because I just felt like he was trying to shove his beliefs down our throats. And I get it, he's reverend, so it's, ten so it's gonna be natural that there might be this feeling of a sermon going on, but I think that because this is a letter to his son that it should have been toned back. The next thing is that I didn't really feel like this book had much of a point. Like I said, it was rambly, so it took a very long time to get anywhere, and by the time we got there, I didn't really understand why it took that long, and it just didn't hook me into the story. There was really nothing to connect me to this story to want me to continue on, although because of how short it was, I did finish it. One positive thing I have for this book is that Marilyn Robinson knows how to write. She writes great, realistic characters that come off the pages, very human characters, and so there were times where I was more intrigued with the side characters than John Ames himself, and that's slightly a negative thing. I think that I should be more interested in John Ames and his thoughts, but all I really wanted to know was more about the other characters, and that in itself was bit frustrating, and I know that the other books deal with those other characters, but I'm not going to be reading them because I just don't really like where she takes her stories here, and also I did try to read the next book and I wasn't really going for it because it had that same feel as Gillian. She has the beginnings of a great writing style, and I definitely think that I will end up picking, it, picking up something that has nothing to do with Gilead but I had to give this one three stars. The next and last book that I have to talk about is Seabiscuit American Legend by Lauren Hillenbrand. Hillenbrand is a great author because she has the ability to take something that could be tedious, which horse racing is on paper, and make it into a grand story not only about the horse, but about the people that are connected to that horse, the owner and the jockey and the, the trainer, who all, who all come from a different way of life and have different viewpoints, and the way she brings them all together was really, really brilliantly done, and I absolutely enjoyed this book because she told a story. She made the characters, these people, really come to life for me, and she taught me more about horse racing, something that I never really wanted to learn more about, but she made it interesting. I will say that there were times where it was just slightly tedious for me, especially when it came to the whole how fast the horse was going type thing, the whole mathematical thing, and that's just because I'm not into math and I have a hard time comprehending a lot of that. I get that she had to put that there in order to show you how significant a miracle it was for Sea Biscuit to be able to go that fast. This short horse, small horse, and nobody really expected him to be able to go that speed. So it's a big deal. But I couldn't understand it, and I wish that she had tried to simplify it, but maybe she couldn't. I don't really know. The one other thing that I have that's a slight negative for this book is that I felt that she inferred. In one specific point, did I feel that, and I don't think that necessarily right to do in a nonfiction work. It's just that I felt like she was guessing at what these people were thinking or feeling in that moment or their motivations, and I didn't really think that was right because you can't know for sure even if you know what happened afterwards. But other than that, 
she keeps in the facts. It's a really well researched book, and you can definitely tell that she worked hard to get all the things that she needed in order to tell the story, and she does really well. But this isn't her strongest book, and of course, this is her first non fiction work, so I get that. And I definitely would recommend Unbroken over Sea Biscuit, but I definitely enjoyed this just kind of a notch lower than Unbroken. In the end, I gave Sea Biscuit four stars. There you go, these are the two books that I've read. Tell me down below if you read either one of them. I would love to discuss with you down below your thoughts. And yes, thank you all so much for watching and keep smiling.